Well, tonight, workers at a local weapons manufacturer say federal agents came in with their guns drawn today and ordered them to the ground. It's a raid happening at Thor Global Defense Group near Van Buren. 4029's Brett Range is live there tonight, where agents have been inside the company most of the day. Brett? Well, the Crawford County Sheriff Ron Brown tells me that his office is assisting agents with the ATF and Homeland Security who served a search warrant here at the company. Now, right now, investigators and agents are still on site, but they're not saying much. Employees say federal agents came inside with guns drawn and ordered them down on the ground. They would not talk on camera, but said the agents took their cell phones and scanned them with a the computer. When one employee asked what was going on, they said federal agents told them it was over exports. Investigators would only say they served a search warrant for possible firearms violations. According to the company's website, Thor Global Defense Group manufactures weapons and sells them across the world. The company also provides security contracting, training, and it has a firing range on site here at the company's headquarters in Crawford County. As of right now, the company CEO, Larry Nisik, has not returned our calls. We asked the U.S. Attorney's Office about today's raid, but a representative said right now they have no comment. And investigators tell me they'll be back out here at least through tomorrow. Live in Van Buren, Brett Rains, 4029 News. Okay, Brad. Well, Thor Global Defense Group Inc. has is a privately operated and held corporation. Now, according to Thor Global Defense's website, the company offers a number of services, products, and concealed carry training. The company's mission statement promises the company to be a one-stop contractor for clients of all types. Only on 4029 News now, the moment a suspect in a midday robbery, bank robbery, is arrested. This is video of Fort Smith detectives walking David Howell to the Sebastian County Jail. Police say a teller at Bank Corp South on Grand Avenue was approached by a man saying he had a weapon and demanded money. He never actually showed the weapon, but but he did. He did. Uh, you know. You know. In in inside of a bank, you don't have to. You don't have to show a weapon. If you go in there with a, with intent and tell somebody you have a weapon, you've and you leave with money, you've committed a bank robbery. Police say surveillance video from inside identifies Hal as the suspect. Soon after alerting the public to the suspect, they got a call about where to find him. Some students protest along a busy street to highlight their rights. These students from Bentonville High School were waving Confederate flags. They say they want to keep the Second Amendment and don't want any more gun control. As for the Confederate flag, they say they also want that to stay around, calling it heritage, not hate. The jury deliberating again today in the federal fraud trial of former state senator John Woods and his consultant, Randall Shelton. 4029, Katie Davidson has been following the case. Katie, what's the latest? While there's no verdict in this case just yet, the jury came in at about 830 this morning and they didn't even get to sit down before the judge recessed them to continue their deliberations. Now, other than that, it was a pretty quiet day in court until about 330 when people started coming back into the courtroom. The judge came in about 10 minutes later and said that the jury had a question regarding jury instruction number seven that deals exactly with the elements of wire fraud. Now he said that it specifically had to deal with the fourth element, which has to do with the interstate portion of that. Now the attorneys and the court all agreed that they would send a written explanation back to the jury for the answer to that question. Now the jury had to recess around 430 today due to one jurors prior commitments, but they'll be right back out here again today or tomorrow, excuse me, at 830 live in Fayetteville. Katie Davidson, 4029 News. OK, Katie, at least five people were killed when a military plane crashed today outside of Savannah, Georgia. The Air Force says the plane was an Air National Guard C-130 cargo plane. It belongs to the 156th Air Wing out of Puerto Rico. It went down around 1030 our time, 1130 Eastern. The Air Force has not said how many people were on board. At this time, we, we cannot confirm the number of uh, souls on board the aircraft. We're not releasing any numbers until we get an accurate count of everything. And we want to make sure that when we do come forward that we're, we're accurate with our numbers and, and that the families have all been notified. The Chatham County Emergency Management Agency says the plane crashed at the intersection of two roads. The wreckage is all over the road as well as onto nearby train tracks. Well, there's been another scary incident involving a broken window on Southwest Airlines flight. The plane was en route from Chicago to Newark before being forced to land in Cleveland. ABC's Maggie Ruley has the latest. 
Another mid-air scare for passengers on a Southwest Airlines flight. After discovering a crack in one of the plane's windows, the crew makes an unscheduled landing in Cleveland. And we're going to get you uh, taken care of. So once again, I need everyone to grab their belongings. Today's fright comes as fears over last month's deadly accident on a Southwest flight are still raw. When a failed engine hurled debris at the plane, cracking a window and killing one woman. The crew of that flight was applauded yesterday at the White House. Celebrating Captain Tammy Jo Schultz and the crew for safely landing and saving the lives of everyone else on board. In the wake of the incident, the FAA has now increased the number of engine fan blades that need to be inspected by tenfold. More than 3,700 aircraft will have to be inspected soon, and now much more often. Understand this is not a fix. It is trying to prevent it from happening again by inspecting it more often. The fix is yet to be determined. As for the plane involved in that deadly accident, it's already back in the air, flown to a Boeing facility outside Seattle with a replacement engine so all of the damage to the aircraft can be repaired. In a statement, Southwest Airlines said today's flight landed without incident and crews in Cleveland are working on the window. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Commitment 2018 election news now. The state Supreme Court says the state can enforce a voter ID law. Last week, a Pulaski County judge ruled against that law, claiming it was unconstitutional. So early voting in the May primary begins Monday, and they will check your IDs. Today, voters in Fort Smith got to hear from candidates vying to be their next mayor. George McGill and Louis Andrade spoke at a town hall-type meeting at noon in Fort Smith. As you can see, there were a number of people that showed up to listen to the candidates' viewpoints. And this race will be decided by voters in an election in August. Arkansas is one of seven states to challenge DACA in a new lawsuit. A federal judge last month ruled the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program must continue. The lawsuit is challenging that ruling in court now to stop the government from issuing and renewing DACA permits. It invites future presidents to ignore the law, ignore the will of the people, and set their own policies on the Second Amendment, privacy rights, drug laws, or any other important issues debated in Congress. And there's a chance that this matter could go all the way to the Supreme Court. Well, today marks the first full day of the Bentonville Film Festival. Acclaimed directors are in town to introduce their months of hard work to attendees at the festival, including one 60-second short film commercial spotlighting Walmart's blue box shipping, uh, blue shipping box, I should say. Nancy Myers, Dee Rees, and Melissa McCarthy directed the first three installments of the box series, and those premiered at the Oscars. The fourth, directed by an intern of the Academy of Motion Pictures, says it's perfect to debut her film in Sam Walton's hometown. I am still a student at USC. Uh, yeah, so everything I've worked on so far has been on the student level and just being making this big commercial was a huge step up and a huge learning experience and just being in, at the Bentonville Film Festival where uh, women and diverse filmmakers are empowered, it's just very inspiring and such an honor. The, direct, the director there says the film aims to empower women and it plays before every film of the festival It'll be online soon as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing any and all of the stars that we spot at the film festival and the latest happenings. You can also send us a message with who you see. Just add us, 4029 News. With the risk of severe weather, organizers of the Bentonville Film Festival are getting well prepared. We'll tell you what could happen if it starts to rain tomorrow at BFF. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Darby Vibe will be back in a few minutes to tell us about tomorrow's severe weather day.
In live Get Ready Traffic now, showing you a look at Interstate 49 in Rogers. See the sun peeking out there, just coming out, shining on the good travel conditions for commuters going home. On our maps, seeing all green in Northwest Arkansas and in the River Valley. Well, Mike Pompeo has been sworn in as the next Secretary of State. President Trump and Vice President Pence presided over the ceremony at the State Department. The Senate confirmed Pompeo last week before he went out on his first overseas trip as the top ambassador for the U.S. Well, tonight, White House lawyer Ty Cobb announcing his plans to retire at the end of the month after playing a prominent part in a special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. President Trump plans to hire Emmett Flood, who advised President Clinton during his impeachment. Meanwhile, Mueller has warned the president's legal team that if the president refuses to sit down with the special counsel, he could be subpoenaed. Ty Cobb has taken the lead in dealing with the special counsel. Yeah, I've been working with the personnel people here and in discussions with uh, the leadership, uh, meaning the president and Chief Kelly, for several weeks on a uh, retirement date. And uh, uh, we finally settled on... Uh, uh, the end of this month. The special counsel is investigating possible obstruction of justice and collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, which President Trump calls, quote, a hoax. Well, new on 4029, police in Texas have arrested a high school student accused of plotting to carry out an ISIS-inspired mass shooting at a local mall. 17-year-old Mateen Azizi Yerand is facing charges of making a terroristic threat and criminal solicitation of capital murder. Officials say he was planning to carry out the attack in mid-May. He had sent upwards of $1,400 to others to buy weapons and tactical gear for him. Well, the Boy Scouts organization is getting rid of the word boy in its name. The program for 11 to 17-year-olds will now be called Scouts BSA starting next February. The chief scout executive says it's meant to be welcoming to girls now, which already allowed, is already allowed in the Cub Scouts. Severe weather already spotted in the Midwest. We showed you this tornado spotted Tuesday in Kansas. Storms also dropped hail there. Take a look at the damage left behind. Houses with small holes in their siding because of the hail ranging from pea size to baseball size. Not the kind of storm you want to go through, but sometimes you have to. The chances for rain and storms not slowing down. The events at Bentonville Film Festival, though, reps for BFF say if there's lightning or heavy rain, they will shut down outdoor attractions and cancel events as needed, but if not, the fun will go on. The publicist for BFF says plenty of the festivities are inside, so movie fans should still feel free to join in on the fun. Rain is actually not bad for a film festival because people will want to be inside, and inside is where we show movies. I would say if it, if it starts raining, you know, rather than, you know, stay inside your house, come out and stay inside the theater and just watch movies and talk to filmmakers all night. There you go. The publicist says the festival as a whole is hard to cancel and retry, but on a case by case basis, some films or events could be rescheduled if needed. Well, almost three weeks after an EF2 tornado ripped through the local community, the town is moving on, but they are preparing for this week's storm chances. The emergency managers for Sebastian and Crawford counties told 4029 News they're planning on keeping their eyes on the radar and they're prepared to mobilize if severe weather strikes again. And these rain chances come as residents are still cleaning up damage, roofs still exposed and houses still being repaired. Well, the storms we're expecting for tonight and early tomorrow morning are not the only chance for severe weather. Let's bring back Chief Meteorologist Darby Vibe. So tomorrow is severe weather day, though. Yeah, it's a severe day. We're going to have a chance tonight for storms, which could be strong to severe. We'll have to watch them carefully. And even more chances throughout the day, Thursday into Thursday evening. I think especially Thursday evening, that's our best chance for severe weather. But uh, Plenty of other chances leading up to that as well. Now, in terms of the threats here, I think wind damage is here on top. That's the number one threat. That's the probably going to be the most likely report that we get uh, tonight into tomorrow and tomorrow night. But tornadoes inhale a close second and uh, definitely going to be a real possibility. And the Storm Prediction Center has outlined our area for the possibility of even a strong tornado. Uh, or some very large hail. So definitely going to be watching these threats carefully uh, tonight and in, on into uh, tomorrow and tomorrow night. Now you can see in our area looking great, but those storms really building in Kansas and these ones here in southwest Oklahoma and the North Texas, those ones, 
That's going to be what we think could affect parts of northwest Arkansas, even parts of the River Valley later on tonight. In the meantime, out ahead of it, hey, looking pretty good, feeling pretty good. Uh, right around 80 in northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. The humidity really increasing. I'm sure you've noticed it out ahead of these storms. So after 10 p.m. tonight, we see those storms getting close to our area. Some of these could be severe, especially in northwest Arkansas, but watching the River Valley as well. It's an impact night tonight, tomorrow. It's a severe day. In other words, uh, tomorrow in particular, the threat of severe weather is great enough that it could be a life threatening situation. We'll be on top of it throughout the day, hit and miss storms throughout the day, possibly severe. But again, that greatest threat likely to be in the evening. It's going to be a windy day, no doubt about that. Now you can see timing this out with our in house model. First chance tonight between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. More chances tomorrow morning, both northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Wouldn't expect the stuff in the morning to be likely to become severe, but we'll be watching those storms in the morning as well, right in tomorrow afternoon and then on into Thursday evening. Some of our models showing individual supercell thunderstorms developing in East Oklahoma and Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley uh, Thursday evening and a Thursday night. We see those develop and you better believe uh, large hail tornadoes will be a possibility. So we'll be watching it carefully. But by Friday morning, the cold front starting to push off to the east and you can see the weekend looking great Saturday and Sunday for the Bentonville Film Festival looking good Sunday night into Monday, Tuesday and on into Wednesday. There will be slight chances of showers for us, but overall a pretty dry pattern certainly for the weekend and the River Valley. Same deal. Once we get past Thursday into Friday, Saturday and Sunday, like in this forecast and great news for us, of course, the Steel Horse Rally going on this weekend in Fort Smith. Great weather for that. Anybody heading into town Thursday, though, could certainly be running into, running into some of those storms. As we go into next week, still some slight chances of rain for us Monday through Wednesday with high temperatures in the low 80s. OK, Darby, next on World News Tonight, we're watching for new information from National Guard officials about today's deadly plane crash. Also, that other emergency involving another Southwest Airlines flight. How did a window crack mid-flight? And new video from the Las Vegas shooting massacre. What body camera footage reveals about how officers responded to the call of an armed man? Well, as technology evolves, so do the thieves. I felt victimized. I felt awful. Next, we're showing you the new scams and how to protect yourself. A murder trial underway in Fayetteville. 48-year-old Mark Edward Chumley is being charged with being an accomplice to capital murder in connection to the death of 24-year-old Victoria Annabeth Davis back in August of 2015. New at 6, Chumley is charged alongside four others for the same crime, why some of them are expected to testify against him.
Ever get the sense there's something fishy about that Nigerian prince asking you for money? Well, while some scams may be easier to detect than others, it doesn't mean you could never fall for one. Consumer Reports dove into some of the latest schemes to help protect you in a growing world of scammers and threats. Pat Slavin dropped off a check in her local collection mailbox. A few weeks later, she was shocked to see what her banking statement showed. When I saw this check online, I went, that handwriting's too neat. I didn't write that. Pat was the victim of a scam. So yeah, this is the mailbox. The check was stolen from the mailbox, bleached, and rewritten for twice the amount. Data show that everyone, irrespective of age, gender, has the potential to be scammed. And like everything else, scams have moved into the digital space. The latest scam hitting mobile phones? Smishing. You get a fake text saying that there's a problem with something like your bank account. If you respond to the text, the scammer will know the number is viable and may contact you to get more personal information. Never click on a link in an email or a text without first confirming that it is from somebody